Reverend Insanity. Chapter 41, Dissecting Rocks. I want to purchase some rocks. Having picked his targets, Fang Yuan said to the female Gu Master, Newbie, the female Gu Master immediately thought. Even the shittiest gamblers would pay very close observation when they wanted to buy the rocks. First they would look carefully, then place the stones in their palms and rub to feel the surface and its weight. Even after such actions, if they find that the feeling is off, they would give up. No one would say, purchase at the start. And for such a type like Fang Yuan, who said, purchase up front, he is undeniably a newbie who is having his first rock gambling experience. Although the female Gu Master thought this, she did not show any difference in her expression, but continued to smile like a flower, saying softly to Fang Yuan, Then which piece are you choosing? Fang Yuan pointed and said, This piece. She immediately retrieved it. Fang Yuan pointed again and said, This piece. She felt perplexed, not expecting this youngster to buy two pieces. It seems like this youngster is the type to gamble heavily, she evaluated mentally. But next, Fang Yuan pointed yet again, and this piece, that piece, I'm buying them all. The female Gu Master was stunned, feeling extremely surprised, she could not help but assess Fang Yuan again. It seems like this ordinary-looking youngster has a really good family background. Otherwise, how would any ordinary Gu Master have the spare cash to spend like this? Thinking of it, the female Gu Master's smile became more gentle and friendly. To think that the youngster in front of her was a real customer. This was an unexpected joy. However, Fang Yuan surprised her once again as he pointed to the furthest purple gold rock. Oh yeah, and those two pieces as well. The female Gu Master could not help but feel shocked internally. Which young master is this from the Gu Yu village? It looks like he's the main family branch's inheritor. If I can hook up with him, I may not need to stay here and slog as a shop clerk anymore. With this thought, the female Gu Master's smile became even more gentle, and she even looked towards Fang Yuan seductively. Six rocks were placed in front of Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan took out sixty primeval stones and passed it to the female Gu Master. His act of payment attracted the attention of all the other Gu Masters in the tent. Oh, someone is going to rock gamble. We've been watching for over an hour, but we haven't acted yet. Now that someone is giving it a try, we might as well watch. It's a student, he actually took out 60 primeval rocks at once, his family must be affluent. He looks like a greenhorn, HMPH, gambling rocks isn't so easy. He's gonna get hurt real bad. The Goo Masters stood on the spot, discussing softly, all directing their gaze towards Fang Yuan. Young Master, do you want to open the rocks on the spot? Our gambling den provides free service to open the rocks. The female Goo Master gently advised, sending seductive glances with her eyes. Fang Yuan used the corner of his eye to take a look at the crowd, his lips curling into a mysterious smile. He waved his hand, rejecting the female Goo Master. Purple gold is my lucky color, and this is my first time betting, it is very meaningful. I'll open the rocks myself. The female Goo Master's eyes shone brighter, thinking this heroic demeanor as expected of a rich young master. Never in her dreams would she be able to imagine that Fang Yuan could be said to be kinless in Gu Yu village, a drifter with no backing, having to rely on himself for everything. Tisk, so what if you have money? I wonder which rich kid this is, coming here to waste his parents' hard-earned money. Ignorant young lad, how can one choose the rocks based on lucky color, sigh, this act is simply akin to throw primeval stones into the water and waiting to see the ripples for fun. The goo masters in the tent lost their excitement at once. After thinking that Fang Yuan was a prodigal son, their already low expectations vanished into thin air. Some goo masters even retracted their gaze and turned around to continue inspecting the fossils on the counter. The changes to his surroundings did not affect Fang Yuan's state of mind at all. He expressionlessly activated the primeval essence within his primeval sea, pouring it into the moonlight goo. The next moment, the crescent mark on his right palm emitted a faint water-like blue light. 
Fang Yuan used this right hand to grab a purple gold rock, holding it in his palm. Next he closed his fingers and slowly rubbed against the surface of the fossil. The blue light continued to shine, the waves of light rippling like water as the purple gold rock shrunk in size, large amounts of powder from rock shavings falling out from the gaps of Fang Yuan's fingers, landing on the carpet of the tent. Young master has good handiwork. The female goo master took the chance and immediately praised. This youngster, he isn't a good for nothing. What great skills. Seeing this sight, the goo master's eyes shone across with a complicated glint. They had started to see Fang Yuan in a new light. Fang Yuan used the blue light to rub against the surface of the rock. This was a form of meticulous usage of the moonlight goo. Normally, one would have to use the moonlight goo for two to three years to be able to reach this level. With Fang Yuan's age and student identity, being able to do this is really remarkable. See, he's using our Gu Yu clan's specialty, the Moonlight Gu. Some of the Gu masters found this and instantly felt proud, gaining affection for Fang Yuan. But opening the rocks with this method, it's still too rough. Some of the older and more experienced Gu masters shook their heads. The purple gold rock got smaller and smaller, from being slightly larger than a palm into the size of a fist, being gripped tightly by Fang Yuan's fingers. The blue light intensified as the fossil became pearl-sized. Until finally, what was left was a pile of rock powder falling on the carpet to form a small hill. This was a solid rock, there was no goo worm inside. As expected, he's unreliable. The goo masters shook their heads. Young master, there's still five pieces left, the female goo master encouraged. Fang Yuan's expression was calm, being completely unaffected. He grabbed the second piece of purple gold rock and continued to grind. But the result of this piece was still a solid rock, there was no goo worm inside. The third piece was still the same. The goo masters grew impatient. Stop looking. By relying on color to pick the rocks, there's no point in this gamble. If he can get a good goo from this, I'll eat the pile of rock powder on the floor, someone laughed insultingly. Don't lose heart, young master, isn't there three pieces left, you're only halfway through, the female goo master continued to edge Fang Yuan on. Fang Yuan grabbed the fourth piece, and when he got it to palm size, he suddenly stopped all action. Oh, there's something. The rock composition changed, it's not purple gold sediments, but a kind of ink black color. Don't tell me he really got super lucky from blinding guessing. The surrounding goo masters exclaimed lightly, Young master, you have to be careful from here onwards. Don't make sudden movements, hibernating goo worms are very fragile. If you use too much strength, you'll kill the goo worm inside. The female goo master did not expect such a situation to occur. After getting stunned for a moment, she immediately advised carefully. Fang Yuan's movement slowed, his fingers slowly rubbing as small powder slowly fell. Continuously repeating the action with many intervals, he was no longer as fluid as earlier. The black-colored rock powder slowly fell off, and as the rock got smaller, Fang Yuan's movements became slower and gentler. On the carpet, the rock powder continued to gather as Fang Yuan's black-colored rock was finally scrapped clean. Sigh, what a pity, it's a rock in a rock. What a waste of my emotions, I really thought there was a goo worm inside. You are all too easy to fool, is rock bedding so easy? Nine out of ten are all empty, how else is the shop going to make money? Young master, your luck is already not bad. Getting a rock in rock the first time, normal people cannot do it. The female goo master tried another way to console Fang Yuan. Similarly, it was to pave way for the result that awaited him. Getting nothing out of gambling rocks was very common, a nine out of ten occurrence. In her opinion, Fang Yuan was choosing at random. The chance of getting a goo fossil was close to zero. Fang Yuan smiled but did not reply, and he continued to take out the fifth rock. He carefully grinded, and in ten breaths' time, the surface of purple-gold-colored rock were all rubbed away, revealing a rough-surfaced yellow mud ball. Chapter 42. It really is a goo. Eh? Don't tell me it's another rock in the rock. 
by the looks of it probably. But it's a little strange, this mud ball is enclosed by a purple gold rock surface. The mud ball surface should be compressed smoothly, so why is the surface still uneven? The surrounding goo masters were perplexed. Looking at the mud ball in his hands, Fang Yuan's expression did not change, but in his heart he was slightly moved. He continued to grind. Under the blue watery light, the powdery sand fell off. Among the powder, there were some soil crumbs mixed in it, falling onto the pile of rock powder beside his leg. Don't tell me there's really something? Upon seeing this, some of the goo masters stared with their eyes wide opened. It's hard to say, someone spoke with an uncertain tone. I feel like there is, there's really something. Another spoke softly. The yellow mud ball gradually decreased in size due to the friction, and when it was palm-sized, someone barged into the tent. Young lad, hold up. I, Jia Jin Sheng, will be buying it. Fang Yuan's movement came to a halt at once. The goo masters in the tent all focused their attention on this person. He looked young on the outside, his appearance around 20 to 25 years old. He wore a golden-colored robe with a lace belt on his waist, and on the belt there was a square-shaped jade piece. There was a word across the piece of jade showing the letter 1. Evidently, this was a rank 1 Gu Master. To still be a rank 1 Gu Master at 20 years old, it seems that his talent isn't good. But the status of this person was rather unique. Seeing him, the Gu Masters in the tent all bowed and greeted him, saying together, your subordinate greets you, second young master. Second young master? He called himself Jia Jin Shen earlier. Is he the half-brother of the merchant caravan leader, Jia Fu? This means to say, this rock gambling den is opened by him. But now that he appeared to interfere, it seems that he's breaking the gambling den's rules. The Gu Masters softly conversed. That's right, I am this shop's shopkeeper. Little brother one, coming out to gamble at such a young age, aren't you afraid of your family's scolding? I will offer forty primeval stones now to buy that mud ball in your hand. What do you think? Forty primeval stones is a lot already, and there may not be a goo inside, but today I am in a good mood. Thus seeing that this is your first time gambling, I don't want you to lose everything, so I'll give you a portion of your capital back. Jia Jin Sheng quickly walked in front of Fang Yuan and said, Forty primeval stones? Fang Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly and took a look at Jia Jin Sheng with the corner of his eye, coldly laughing. It seems you want to forcefully buy the mudball fossil in my possession. Forceful purchase is spoiling the gambling den's rules. Furthermore, you're now on King Mao Mountain. You want to bully a Gu Yu clansman like me in front of everyone? Oh, on hearing Fang Yuan's last sentence, all the other Gu Masters could not take it and animosity grew uncontrollably in them as they looked towards Fang Yuan's direction. Their expression towards Jia Jin Sheng also became unfriendly. Jia Jin Sheng had thought a 15-year-old like Fang Yuan would be easy to deal with, easily persuaded with a few words. But to think this Fang Yuan had such capabilities, and with a single sentence, he caused Jia Jin Sheng to be in such a predicament. Seeing the Gu Masters getting ready to interfere, Jia Jin Sheng's expression changed immediately as he changed his tone, quickly waving his hands. Little brother, you're mistaken. I am the shopkeeper of this gambling den. How could I ruin my own reputation by breaking my own rules? How would I be able to conduct business in the future? Hehe. <laughs> I just found your mud ball a little interesting, thus I wanted to buy it. If you do not wish to sell it, that's fine. But if there's nothing inside later, don't blame me for not reminding you. Fang Yuan paid no more attention to him. He turned around and continued to focus on grinding the mud ball in his hands. His movements were very slow and very meticulous. Often there was only a hint of dry soil powder falling off after a moment or so. Following his movement, a hibernating goo worm gradually appeared in front of everyone's eyes. My God, there really is a goo worm. He really opened a goo. What the hell, this sort of method of gambling can also work. This young man's luck is off the charts, he actually managed to forcefully luck out on getting a goo. Immediately, the goo master's exasperation filled the tent. 
The female goo master subconsciously covered her mouth, being unable to believe the scene before her. As shop clerk, along the way she had been to many mountain villages, seeing all sorts of people and all kinds of customers, but she had never seen such a comedic scene. There is really a goo, cold light flashed across Jia Jin Sheng's eyes as he hated and regretted in his heart. The thing he hated most was to be taken advantage of. This gambling den that he opened, he had placed many surveillance methods. Once a customer was about to open a goo, he'd receive the news and would normally forcefully buy it. But now Fang Yuan was inside his gambling den, getting a goo under his very eyes. Jia Jin Sheng could feel his heart bleeding. What he obtained was a toad goo. Its entire body was yellow from head to foot. The belly was light yellow, and its back was brownish yellow, covered with many pimply boils, full of nodules and warts which were a distinctive characteristic of the toad species. At one glance it looked slightly horrifying. It was not big, being only palm-sized. Holding it in the palm was akin to holding two to three eggs. Fang Yuan's expression was calm under all sorts of admiration, envy and exasperation carefully deploying his primeval essence and injecting it into the toad's body. At this moment, the goo was being refined by Fang Yuan. Goo worms obtained from within fossils are normally extremely weak. Not only do they have little to no strength left, their consciousness is also lazy, leaving them defenseless and unable to resist. Thus, they can be easily refined by the goo masters. Upon being awakened by Fang Yuan, the toad goo opened its eyes slowly, and its belly slightly vibrated, softly calling out. Croak. Its voice was soft, but it made everyone's expression very interesting. The difference in value between a goo that was alive against one that was dead was huge. It's a live goo. He really opened a live goo. Someone rubbed his eyes, unable to believe this. This is the mudskin toad, damn it, it really is the mudskin toad. Someone recognized the toad goo's identity and screamed agitatedly. This young man really has got luck, why don't I have such luck on my side? Someone sighed, filled with complicated emotions such as envy, jealousy, and hatred. Young master, congratulations, this, this, this is to date, my first time seeing such a precious goo worm. The female goo master was shocked beyond words, her eyes glistening with life. It's actually the mudskin toad. This is a rare rank 2 goo worm, its value worth 500 primeval stones. Damn it, damn. Someone actually managed to open such a goo worm in my shop. I've lost big time, big time. Jia Jin Sheng's face was pale as he stared daggers at the toad, his heart having a strong urge to just snatch the goo away. But he knew he couldn't, for if he really did that, it would be asking for trouble. This was not his family's village, but the Gu Yu clan's territory. Maybe I should have paid a bit more primeval stones, maybe he might have given it to me? That's right, he's just a student. If I offered a hundred primeval stones, there's no way he'd not be moved. Why didn't I do that? Jia Jin Shang was full of regret. No, maybe this young lad does not know his stuff. Even though he opened a mudskin toad, I should be able to suppress the price and buy it. Jia Jin Sheng's heart had renewed hope. But at the next moment, this hint of hope was mercilessly smashed by Fang Yuan's words. Fang Yuan plainly looked at the mudskin toad in his hands, ignoring the surrounding people's praises and shock. He used an extremely calm tone and said to Jia Jin Sheng, Mudskin toad, rank 2 goo worm, requires 500 grams of yellow soil every meal, the more fertile the soil the better. Its species is few in number, and it is the necessary main goo in refining the treasure brass toad. The market price is 500 primeval stones. Jia Jin Sheng, do you want to buy this? You actually know so clearly, Jia Jin Sheng mumbled. After such a shock, he could not say a word. Fang Yuan laughed lightly and continued, If you're unwilling, that's fine. I'll sell it to someone else. I'm sure someone will be interested. Hold it, wait, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. But can't this price be cheaper? Jia Jin Sheng's smile turned bitter. Fang Yuan turned around and walked away. Jia Jin Sheng hurriedly chased after him. Don't, don't go. I'll buy, I'll buy it. 
Fang Yuan had no plans to nurture this mudskin toad. It was a rank 2 goo, but Fang Yuan was still a rank 1 initial stage. Although it ate yellow soil, King Mao Mountain was full of green soil, hence finding food for it would be troublesome. Moreover, if he does not sell this goo worm, Fang Yuan would have to feed three goo worms himself. Putting aside the increased primeval stone expenditure, even the current amount of primeval stones in his possession would not be enough to feed them. Thus, Fang Yuan's plan was to immediately sell away the mudskin toad, get the 500 primeval stones, and earn a fortune. To a rank 1 initial stage like Fang Yuan, 500 primeval stones was considered a large amount already. The transaction was quickly completed, and Fang Yuan transferred the mudskin toad to Jia Jin Sheng in front of the crowd, at the same time accepting five heavy money bags. Each bag had a hundred primeval stones. Fang Yuan originally had 98 primeval stones, and after spending 60 on gambling rocks, he had 38 left. Now his fortune multiplied many times, and he owned 538 primeval stones. Upon seeing this, many Gu masters turned green with envy. Fang Yuan put the five bags in his bosom before taking the last piece of purple gold fossil and walked out of the tent. Young master, you're not opening that fossil. The female Gu master blinked rapidly and stared at Fang Yuan's back, loudly reminding him. Fang Yuan paid no heed and left the gambling den without turning back. He left behind a gang of stunned Gu masters staring at each other silently. Jin Jia Sheng calling Fang Yuan little brother is a way of greeting. They are not related in any way. Chapter 43 The Final Sixth Purple Gold Rock The green copper primeval sea had tides rising and falling, ebbing and flowing. Above the sea level, the liquor worm curled into a ball, emitting the wine vapor that gradually developed into white mist. A surge of primeval essence with a swoosh rushed up against the tide and into the wine mist. When the tide receded, there was already half left, and the color was even darker. From initial stage jade green one, it had converted into middle stage pale green. Middle stage primeval essence fell into the sea, but it did not mix with the initial stage primeval essence. As if it was denser, it sank to the bottom. Thus, the situation became that the upper layer of the primeval sea was filled with initial stage primeval essence, while the lower half was middle stage primeval essence. As time flowed, the wine mist circulated within the aperture. Under the refinement of the liquor worm, eventually, the initial stage primeval essence continued to decrease, while the middle stage primeval essence gradually increased. It could be seen with the naked eye where the lower layer middle stage primeval essence gradually rose while the upper layer initial stage primeval essence continued to decrease but also rose in sea level. As Fang Yuan refined his primeval essence, he extracted the natural essence from the primeval stones at the same time, quickly replenishing the dwindling primeval essence in his aperture. Finally, the 45% primeval sea in his aperture was fully refined into middle-stage primeval essence. Much thanks to the middle-stage primeval essence, or else I would not have been able to open the rocks five times in the gambling den. Sitting in a lotus position on his bed, Fang Yuan gradually opened his eyes. It was currently late at night. After he walked out of the gambling den, he did not tour around any of the other shops but instead headed back to the academy. Although it was at the fringe of the Gu Yu Mountain Village, as a rank 1 initial stage Gu master, owning 538 primeval stones is still too much. This is not only because the primeval stones were heavy and a hassle to bring around, it also attracts other people's coveting. In another sense, it would endanger his life. If there was a rank 1 upper stage, or even a rank 2 who coveted his assets, with Fang Yuan's current ability, he would not be able to contend. Wealth comes and goes, but humans die because of wealth, it's pathetic. What's laughable is that many people in this world cannot comprehend that. The boat of benefits carries many people, but has also sunk many others. Fang Yuan's lips curled into a cold smirk as he looked at the gray-white primeval stones in his hands. A complete primeval stone was around the size of a duck egg. 
But the stone in his hand, as it had been extracted of half of its essence, was an entire circle smaller. Fang Yuan did not regret it. Everything has its gains and losses. Fang Yuan was only a C-grade talent, yet he was using the liquor goo to refine his primeval essence, and his primeval stone's expenditure was multiple times of the people of his age. Yet it was because of this that he was able to overcome the lack of his talent. If the real cultivation pace could be counted, he would be able to rank first three. Fang Yuan put the primeval stones back into his money bag and took out that final purple gold fossil. He bought a total of six fossils at the gambling den and opened five on the spot, bringing the last one back with him. His eyes shone as he activated the moonlight goo, grinding with five fingers, slowly dissecting the rock. The purple gold fossil gradually shrunk under the blue ripples and finally was grinded to nothingness, leaving behind a pile of powder on the ground. Fang Yuan was not surprised because in rock gambling, you lose nine out of ten times. Even with his 500 years of experience, he could only manage eight losses out of ten times, and in the remaining two times, it depended on whether it was a live goo or a dead goo. Dead goo had basically no value. As for live goo, they might not be a rare type of goo worm, and even if it was a tremendously precious goo, one might attract a life-threatening crisis because of it. Fang Yuan's current cultivation level was still very low, it was at the bottom tier of the Goo Masters. The mudskin toad that he obtained earlier, if it weren't for the fact that this was the Gu Yu Mountain Village, it might have been forcefully snatched away by that Jia Jin Sheng. Gambling was never the way for developing family wealth, and in fact it was a bigger cause of bankruptcy and debt. This was not the development path that Fang Yuan wanted to take. Although the final purple gold fossil did not have a goo worm, Fang Yuan was not disappointed. In fact, he looked at the pile of rock powder and gradually broke into a smile. Indeed, his ultimate motive in entering the gambling den was all for this pile of rock powder. That mudskin toad was only something he had gotten out of convenience. He privately opened the fossil, and other than him, nobody knew the truth of this result. From that day forth, he could claim that the liquor worm was awakened and subdued from the purple gold fossil. This idea was fabulous. Firstly, nobody could confirm what goo worm really exists in the fossils. Who would dare say that the liquor worm could not hibernate within the purple gold fossil? That's completely possible. Secondly, he had several eyewitnesses. He opened the mudskin toad, which would have left a strong impression on the goo masters in the gambling den. Thirdly, even if someone relentlessly questioned him, he could push everything onto his luck. Luck was something unfathomable. Even if someone suspected that this was the flower wine monk's liquor worm against an excuse like luck, they'd have no idea how to argue against Fang Yuan. Within the dark room, Fang Yuan's expression was ominous. One-sided covering up was akin to covering fire with paper. There would be a day where he would be exposed. To get rid of a hidden threat like the liquor worm, he'd have to strike first. This is Fang Yuan's style. Moreover, he had thought about it carefully, and in the cultivation process that was to follow, he would need to expose the liquor worm. For a rank 1 goo like the liquor worm, it is extremely precious to rank 1 goo masters. But for rank 2 goo masters, it is no longer compatible for them. Thus, even if this was exposed, all I would get is some attention but it would not affect the overall situation, thus becoming nothing to be concerned over. It is not like the spring and autumn cicada. If the spring and autumn cicada is exposed, I might die a horrible death at the very next moment. Five hundred years of experience in handling problems had already made Fang Yuan extremely familiar with human mentality with their every thought clear as day to him. The Flower Wine Traveler's Legacy and the Mudskin Toad, among my memories these are the only two treasures here, and now that they have been obtained by me, what I can do next is only gradual and steadfast cultivation. Fang Yuan sighed a deep breath and relaxed his body, feeling a strong sense of fatigue engulfing him. A Gu Master's primeval sea cultivation could not replace sleep. Fang Yuan pulled his blanket and lay down on his bed, his eyes still half open. 
although there were five hundred primeval stones hidden under the bed, as well as many pots of green bamboo wine, he still felt a sense of urgency and danger. These five hundred over primeval stones were already a form of limit. From flourish to decline, Fang Yuan was clear that henceforth his primeval stone expenditure would only get bigger. But his income was mostly from extorting his classmates. He had been increasingly feeling the growth and improvement of his classmates. Especially in the recent few extortions, Gu Yu Mo Chen, Kai Chen, and his brother Gu Yu Fang Zheng had greatly improved in their kicks and punches. Previously, he only needed one or two strikes to take them down, but now he needed five or six. Another three to four plunders, and their punches and kicks would have been polished fully. If they challenge me one by one, with my current stamina, I cannot endure that kind of round-robin battle. Five hundred primeval stones might seem a lot, but with my current expenditure of four stones a day, it is actually not that much. King Mao Mountain already has no treasures left, but nearby on the Bai Gu Tu Mountain, there is a secretly built strength inheritance of a rank four Gu Master of the Righteous Path. Sigh, it still boils down to the flower wine monk's treasure being too little, only giving me a liquor worm. Hmm, there is still that film image wall, maybe I can sell it to a certain merchant in the caravan. Fang Yuan thought as his eyelids grew heavier until he finally fell asleep. Chapter 44 Monkey Wine Not Yielding the Opportunity of the Liquor Worm On the second day in the afternoon during lunch break, Fang Yuan went to the shopping district outside the mountain village again. As many of them had to work in the day, there was not many villagers at the tentage area. Fang Yuan walked to the area where the vendor was selling intimate grass last night, according to his memory. He reached only to see an empty cart, still on the spot. An ostrich was dragging the cart along. It stood on the spot proudly, its body size as large as an ostrich, while having the appearance of a chicken, the back of the creature bulged into a curved angle. A pair of wide wings were collected on the side of its body, the feathers splendidly bright in seven colors. The chicken head was raised tall, its huge red coxcomb like an agate crown, flashing with the luster of a gem under the sunlight. It seems I was still too late, the intimate grass was sold out. What a pity, if I were able to buy a few caddy of intimate grass, I'd be able to save quite a bit of primeval stones. Fang Yuan's footsteps came to a halt as he walked away and continued to venture deeper into the area. Come, have a taste of the delicious wine from all the different villages. There are more than a hundred types of wine here, like the lantern grass wine, the nine-tune wine with a strong aftertaste, the light and elegant ancient dragon well, the sweet and sour flower rock tune, the mouth-watering hundred spring old cellar, the rich and heavy fragrant intoxication of three autumns. In front of a blue round bucket before the tent, a shop assistant was hawking with gusto. A light flashed through Fang Yuan's gaze as he immediately grew interested. With a turn, he entered the wine shop. The decor in the wine shop was very unique. At the most inner part of the tent, there was a long counter. A goo master was stationed there, with tens of crystal ladybugs around the size of wicker baskets behind him, sticking onto the tent's cloth walls. On the floor there was no carpet, but rather the uncovered mountain rocks and soil, among the soil, vibrant colored mushrooms grew. These mushrooms had all sorts of colors, looking round and slightly cute. Some were as large as tables, while others were short like benches. They were often distributed where a large table mushroom was surrounded by a few shorter bench mushrooms. This is the innocent mushroom, purposely grown by a goo master. It has the ability to absorb dust and particles in the air to purify it, and it's a type of grass goo. Fang Yuan could recognize the mushroom's origins immediately upon seeing them. He chose one of the short mushrooms and sat down. The mushroom's surface immediately sank down a little, making Fang Yuan feel like he was sitting on a sofa like those on earth. Young master, this is the wine catalog, would you like to take a look? A shop assistant walked over. Fang Yuan glanced at the wine catalog and realized that the wine here was more expensive than the green bamboo wine. I'll have a cup of monkey wine. Fang Yuan put down the catalog. A cup of monkey wine. 
the shop assistant turned around and shouted. At the counter, the rank one goo master heard and immediately bent down to take out a bamboo wine cup. Next he took the wine cup and turned around, facing the tentage. On the blue tent walls were the tens of crystal ladybugs, head facing downwards and tail facing upwards, quietly latched onto the walls as if they were merely decorations for the tent. These crystal ladybugs were also a type of goo. Its stomach was empty, as they were often used by goo masters to carry precious liquids. Their bodies were transparent, as if they were made of crystals. From the outside, one could see that within the ladybug's stomach, different kinds of liquor could be found. The goo master quickly found the crystal ladybug that contained the monkey wine among them. He placed the bamboo wine cup at the mouthpiece of the ladybug and gently stroked the exoskeleton of the ladybug with his other hand. A small amount of primeval essence entered the crystal ladybug's body, and afterwards it opened its mouth and a gush of liquor flowed into the bamboo wine cup. The liquor splattered around in the cup until it was full. The goo master placed the bamboo wine cup, which was filled with monkey wine on the counter. The shop assistant, who had already been waiting for a while, quickly held up the cup meticulously and walked a few steps to deliver it to Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan only took a tiny sip, the monkey wine was indeed a fruit liquor, being sweet and refreshing and delicate on the palate. He stopped drinking, but instead with a thought, Fang Yuan summoned the liquor worm. The white and fat liquor worm turned into a flash of white light and curved an arc in the air. With a plop, it landed in the wine cup. The wine splattered everywhere, sprinkling onto the mushroom table. The liquor worm joyfully beat about in the wine cup, and the monkey wine could be seen decreasing with the naked eye. In a few breaths' time, the cup had dried out, with not a single drop left. It's the liquor worm! The goo master at the counter shouted, his eyes sparkling. He was a rank one goo master with grade D talent, only able to follow the merchant caravan and work in this wine shop. His objective was to sightsee while finding his chances. The liquor worm can refine primeval essence and raise it by an entire realm. To a rank one goo master, it can be said to be an extremely precious goo worm. Isn't this the chance he's been painstakingly searching for? This young master, do you have any plans to sell this liquor worm? He excitedly approached, a look of sincerity in his eyes. Fang Yuan shook his head, rejecting him with a determined attitude, getting up to leave after that. His motive this time was to reveal the liquor worm in his possession. He had never thought of selling it. Young master, young master, please hold on. I am really sincere about this. Maybe we can sit down and have a discussion. The goo master reluctantly followed Fang Yuan to the tentage entrance, but Fang Yuan did not show any response to him. In the end, he could only stand on the spot his expression extremely regretful as he watched Fang Yuan's rear view turn around a corner and disappear into the midst of the horizon. Unconsciously, the sun gradually set as the crescent moon took its place. In the night, the moonlight shone brightly but was overpowered by the numerous street lights in the merchant shops. The merchant shop tonight was swarming with business. Fang Yuan was squeezed left and right as he entered, hearing all sorts of conversations inadvertently. The stores normally open for three days and three nights. Tonight is already the second night, by the morning of the day after, the merchant caravan would have left on their journey already. Thus, we have to hurry if we want to buy anything. I saw a golden bell goo yesterday, sigh, too bad it was too expensive. After haggling with the shopkeeper for a long time, it did not get any cheaper. I'll go and take a look tonight. Did you guys hear? Last night, a young man opened a mudskin toad and earned a profit of 500 primeval stones. Fang Yuan listened attentively, feeling disappointment in his heart as he did not hear anything about the liquor worm. The liquor worm is only a rank one goo worm but it is extremely meaningful to a rank 1 goo master, yet it's useless to a rank 2 or rank 3 goo master as they are unable to refine their primeval essence any further with it. Thus, it is normal that no one paid attention to this. However, taking the initiative to expose the matter of the liquor worm cannot be rushed for a period of time. If I overdo it, it might end up letting the cat out of the bag. 
As Fang Yuan walked, he pondered silently in his heart. At this point, there was a hustle in front of him. Next, Fang Yuan heard someone shout, Quickly come and see, there's a dishonest merchant here selling fake goo to our clansmen. Anger stirred among the crowd. Oh, there's something like that happening. Go and see quickly which shop dares to cheat our clansmen. Fang Yuan followed the crowd and moved towards the commotion as well. What met his eyes were a group of people surrounding the mouth of a large red tent, the massive crowd swarming it. Some were curiously watching while others stared coldly, but most of the people were enshrouded with a sense of anger. Outside the tent stood two people. One of them was a young rank two Gu master whose attire showed that he was obviously from the Gu Yu clan. The other person had a familiar face, it was the owner of the gambling den, Jia Jin Sheng. The young Gu master held a black Gu worm in his hands, raising it up and shouting to the crowd, My clansmen, this person in front of me sold me a fake Gu yesterday, lying to me that it was a black boar Gu and sold it to me for 250 primeval stones. To think that when I got home to refine it, I realized that it was not a black boar Gu, but simply an ordinary stinky fat worm. Jia Jin Sheng laughed coldly, Don't accuse me falsely. Since when did I tell you it was a black boar goo? What proof do you have? The young goo master on seeing Jia Jin Sheng's denial fell into a rage and grabbed Jia Jin Sheng's wrist. You cunning merchant, you dare to deny it. You actually dare to lie to me of the Gu Yu clan on King Mao Mountain itself. Are you trying to look for death? Let go of me. Jia Jin Sheng was also furious as he flicked his wrist, slapping away the young Gu Master's hand. If you want to find trouble and extort money, you should find a better target. I am not afraid of you. My brother is Jia Fu, a rank 4 Gu Master. What can you do to me? You! The young Gu Master stared with his eyes wide, but did not dare to take action. The name of a rank 4 Gu Master was enough to intimidate him. Bah! Jia Jin Sheng spat on the ground, raising his head and looked at the young Gu Master, laughing in disdain. It was you who wanted to take advantage of the cheap Gu. Didn't you use your brain to think why a black boar Gu, which can raise a Gu Master's strength, being such a rare Gu worm, was sold even more cheaply than a liquor worm? It is normally sold at 600 primeval stones. Did you think that you could buy one for just 250 primeval stones? Dream on. Bastard, the young Gu Master gritted his teeth, his face flushing red as he trembled out of anger, his chest burning with the rage of humiliation. There were chatters among the people as they got restless, discussing furiously. But no one dared to step up, for the rank 4 Gu Master status of Jia Fu was like a giant hill in front of them, stabilizing the crowd. This lad is too vicious, what a cunning merchant. No wonder he dared to be so arrogant on King Mao Mountain, he is actually Jia Fu's little brother. I heard that they are just half-brothers, but even with that rank 1 cultivation, he is able to use this relationship to act unrestrained in the caravan. What happened here exactly? At this moment, a loud voice spoke out. Jia Fu is here. The leader is here to settle the dispute, everyone give way. The discussion came to a halt as everyone separated and formed a narrow path between them. A middle-aged Gu master having a muscular short body coupled with a giant belly walked in. He wore a long-sleeved yellow robe, being the leader of the merchant caravan, Jia Fu. Sir Jia Fu, my regards. The young Gu master was furious but did not dare to say anything. He forced himself to endure the anger and paid respects to Jia Fu. Jia Jin Sheng was frozen on the spot, not expecting his brother to arrive, his face suddenly pale as anger flashed across his eyes. This peculiar expression was captured by Fang Yuan, who was observing from afar as he pondered about the situation. Chapter 45 Clear of the Schemes, Unknowingly Trapped in the Urn Hello, young Gu Master, what is the problem here? Jia Fu walked to the middle of the crowd and asked amicably. The young Gu master was flattered and he cupped his fists again. Looking at the surrounding clansmen, he bucked up his courage and explained the entire situation. So that's what happened, Jia Fu nodded while listening. 
Next, he asked Jia Jin Sheng, Little brother, is this true? Jia Jin Sheng turned his head away and snorted coldly, not looking at his brother. Jia Fu pondered solemnly. The surrounding people were silent, not daring to interrupt his thoughts. All awaited in anticipation of his verdict. This matter was in fact due to Jia Jin Sheng's scam, but the young Gu master was also at fault for being greedy and not being vigilant himself, otherwise he would not have gotten cheated. If Jia Fu wanted to defend his brother, with his rank 4 cultivation, even the Gu Yu clan leader could not do anything. Jia Fu thought for a while before finally speaking. I've understood the situation, my brother is at fault for this matter, causing this young man to suffer a loss and buy fake products, I am really sorry, saying so, he cupped his fists towards the young Gu master. Sir Jia Fu! The young Gu master was largely surprised, and quickly said modestly, You are a rank 4 Gu master, I am merely a rank 2, this is too much for me, too much. Jia Fu waved his hand, he he, this has nothing to do with cultivation levels, I act impartially regardless of ability. A wrong is a wrong, I apologize to you on behalf of the merchant caravan. As for compensation, how about this, you lost 250 primeval stones, so I will compensate double that amount to you on behalf of the Jia family. He executed his promise immediately as a follower took out five money bags and handed it to the young Gu master in public. Every money bag was filled to the brim, each containing a hundred primeval stones. The young Gu master took over the money bag, so overwhelmed that he could not say anything. However, I have a word of advice to you. Jia Fu continued and reminded, A black boar Gu is very rare, for it is able to raise a Gu master's strength permanently. Although it is only rank one, it is very hard to find on the market. Every time one appears in the market, it would be bought immediately. The pricing is around 600 primeval stones. Trying to get one with 250 primeval stones is impractical. Junior has learnt his lesson. The young Gu master bowed deeply to Jia Fu in gratitude. Cheers erupted from the crowd. Sir Jia Fu is brilliant. Magnificent, as expected of Sir Jia Fu. As a rank 4 Gu master, he did not make use of his status to bully the weaker party. Sir Jia Fu really is the role model of the righteous path. No, no. Jia Fu smiled, cupping his fists towards the crowd, modestly saying, Our Jia family business bases our principles on trust and honesty. Everyone, my brother is young and foolish, liking to play pranks on others. He is actually very kind. I hope everyone can be more bearing of him, don't take it to heart. The crowd's cheers became even louder. HMPH, Jia Jin Sheng's expression was ugly as he stomped on the ground and walked into the tent. Next he walked out from the back of the tent. Fang Yuan looked at this silently, thinking in his heart, it seems that the image wall at the flower wine monk's place can be sold. The flower wine monk had used a photo audio Gu to record the ugly acts of the fourth generation Gu Yu clan leader. Before he died, with indignance in his heart, used the photo audio Gu and slapped it on the wall, creating an image wall. The image wall's images continued to loop, showing the truth to the people. With the intention of maximizing his profits, Fang Yuan had wanted to sell this image wall long ago. He believed that the other two clan families on King Mao Mountain, the Bai family and Qing family would be very interested in this image wall. But to sell this personally would be very inappropriate. His cultivation was too weak, and if he brought this image wall to the other villages, he could easily be silenced. Even if the transaction was successful and he managed to return safely, there was no secret that would stay a secret forever, and once it was revealed to the Gu Yu's higher-ups, he would be kicked out of the clan family at best. In accordance to Fang Yuan's plans, he still needed to make use of the Gu Yu clan. Thus, the safest way was to sell it to a certain merchant in the caravan. All of them were outsiders and were not involved in the disputes among the villages, thus it was the best choice for him. In just one day, this caravan would leave the Gu Yu Mountain village and lead towards either the Xeng family or the Bai family. 
Fang Yuan could reduce his risks to the minimum by selling to them, it was the safest method. One more cup. Wine, where's the wine? Quickly get me the wine, are you afraid that I'm unable to pay? Jia Jin Sheng slammed the mushroom table as he howled. Young Master Jia, here's your wine. The clerk quickly brought him his wine. Jia Jin Sheng grabbed the bamboo cup and tilted his head and gulped the liquor. Good wine, he laughed loudly, sounding coarse and bleak. With a bang, he placed the cup on the table and howled again. Get me another glass, I want as many as you can supply. The clerks did not dare to offend him and could only do as he said. Luckily, this wine house was already full of people. Not only were the mushroom tables packed with people, even the surrounding streets were packed with people. Jia Jin Sheng's drunkard temperament was not very peculiar in this bustling street. Jia Jin Sheng drank cup by cup, wanting to drown his sorrows. With his back facing the crowd, no one observed that as he drank, two clear lines of tears flowed down his cheeks. Who would know of his pain, his sorrow? A hateful person has to have his pitiful side conversely. Everybody had their own stories. Amongst his brothers, he was the youngest, being the most handsome and resembling his father the most, thus being the most doted by his father. But heaven made fun of him by giving him only D-grade talent. As he grew up, he lived under the pressure of his brothers. He was indignant and wanted to resist, but with that talent, there was nothing he could do. His father felt death approaching and wanted to split his assets. Two people were to lead a merchant caravan. They pledged to break up the family property in accordance to the results. Jia Jin Sheng wanted to rely on his own method to acquire the family assets and the recognition of his clan but to think that he became his brother's stepping stone once again. When Jia Fu appeared, he knew he fell into a trap. This was a scheme right from the beginning. But what could he do? Once he entered this caravan, he was doomed to be Jia Fu's fodder. Rank 4 and Rank 1 was such a huge gap that he was powerless to fight again. Jia Fu, he forced this name out of his mouth, his eyes burning with the flames of hatred, he was unable to take it lying down. Do you wish to deal with your brother? I can help you. At this time, he heard a voice. Jia Jin Sheng was stunned, but when he turned around, he saw that for quite a while there was someone sitting beside him. He shook his head and blinked a few times, finally seeing who it was. Who else if not for Fang Yuan? It's you, he stared at Fang Yuan, slightly angry. I remember you, lucky lad, getting a mudskin toad from my gambling den. You're here to mock me. Fang Yuan looked at Jia Jin Sheng, his eyes cold as water. I have a huge business, so if you wish to acquire better results and get more assets, why not listen to me? Jia Jin Sheng was suspicious. His back straightened and he sat up. How do you know about the matter of the assets? This secret was not easily known to outsiders, but Fang Yuan was easily able to guess it. The Jia family's business is not top secret, how can it evade people who wish to know? Fang Yuan laughed coldly and thought of a memory from his previous life. The Jia family head was a legendary figure who started from scratch. He made his fortune through the merchant caravans and revived the Jia family's village. He gradually got old and when he could feel that his time was up, he got his children to form a caravan in twos and according to their results, split the assets. The better they did, the more family assets they get. But his eldest son Jia Fu and second son Jia Gui were extremely talented. After competing for six to seven years, they still could not come to a conclusion, and even after the family head died, there was no clear victor. After the Jia family head died, there was an enormous amount of assets. While competing for the assets, the two brothers' conflict escalated and both called in external help, causing a large-scale goo competition. Finally, the both of them died. The Jia family that had prospered quickly also failed quickly, causing people to talk about it in amazement. Jia Jin Sheng squinted his eyes, for Fang Yuan's explanation was irrefutable. He thought, from the time his father declared the asset distribution, it had already been two years. There are no impenetrable walls in the world, so even if someone found out about it, it's nothing strange. His real worry was whether this was another trap by Jia Fu, 
But no matter what, there was no harm listening. Fang Yuan did not speak immediately. He surveyed the surroundings. This was the same wine cellar he came into in the afternoon. The shopkeeper operated independently, and at night, the shop was bustling with business. Discussing here was a far safer place than a quiet environment as it could avoid the eavesdropping of certain goo worms. He hooked his fingers at Jia Jin Sheng. Lend me your ear. Jia Jin Sheng unhappily snorted but still slanted his head forward. After hearing Fang Yuan's description, he frowned and looked at Fang Yuan coldly. This business involves the three families on King Mao Mountain, and we merchants detest getting involved in other people's disputes. HMPH, you were sent here by Jia Fu to harm me right. Fang Yuan had long expected for him to be suspicious. He did not bother to explain, but got up and left. He he, in that case, I'll go talk to your brother. Jia Jin Sheng squinted his eyes, staring at Fang Yuan. Only until Fang Yuan had left the wine shop did he lose his patience. He chased out of the tent and caught up to Fang Yuan. Don't go, we can have a talk. Fang Yuan placed both hands behind his back, staring at him from the side, coldly saying, I know you are suspicious of me, but now that your brother has you firmly caught, you're almost close to finished. If you choose to believe in me, there's still hope, if not you're doomed. Are you daring enough to take this bet? Jia Jin Sheng's expression changed as he corrected and said, Jia Fu is but only a little older, I have never acknowledged him as my brother, but you're right, I'm taking this bet. Fang Yuan said solemnly, Two thousand primeval stones, no haggling. Jia Jin Sheng laughed bitterly, Too expensive, this trade involves high risk. The greater the risk, the greater the rewards. Fang Yuan shook his head, his attitude firm, if you sell it to those two families, you will only earn much more. Jia Jin Shang nodded, showing a hint of seriousness. This I believe, for these years the Bai family has been growing fast, and in a grade talent called Bai Ning Bing has appeared recently, he has a great future ahead. King Mao Mountain's situation is gradually changing. Your Gu Yu family's dominance is wavering, and if I sell this to the Bai family, I can at least earn twice as much. Hearing Jia Jin Sheng's understanding of the King Mao Mountain situation, Fang Yuan could not help but evaluate him again, thinking, This Jia Jin Sheng, he is still a merchant family member after all, not those useless second generations. Jia Jin Sheng sighed, Regardless of whether this is a trap, I'm jumping in. I promise you two thousand primeval stones it is, however, I want to see the merchandise first. Of course, come with me. Fang Yuan laughed as he led the way. Jia Jin Sheng was already trapped in the urn, and the situation was fully in Fang Yuan's grasp.